What's up and good afternoon guys. Welcome back to another video. Chris, say hi. Are we recording today? Nope. Yep. Liar. Separately. Liar. It's a separate video, Chris. There's two videos getting filmed on the same day. So as you guys know, we're working on the restaurant project. We're working on the mini truck project. I'm kind of doing both the same days, but obviously those videos don't go well together. So we are filming two videos in a day while doing two different jobs in a day. Whatever. Crazy. My life's crazy. But. Me too. Oh, you're, you're less crazy too? Yeah. I don't just stand around all day. <laughs> so anyways, back on the mini truck project. We've got a couple, uh, tie up a few loose ends here um, before we get this thing ready to go to powder coat. And obviously one of which is take off the uh, 14 inches extra of piping that we have here coming up on the neck and the coupler itself. We don't need all that. It looks goofy, so we're gonna cut that right where this blue line is. I used my tape to make sure I got a nice straight line all the way around the circumference. Then, we got sad news for Chris. His slide's gonna be leaving today, albeit it was the first load the mini truck ever hauled, but it's also gonna be the first load another trailer is gonna haul, and you're gonna see that here in a second. Chris, are you sad the slide is leaving? No, it's going to a better home. So anyways, let's get this cut. We're gonna use the bandsaw, it's like the perfect size. Jesus Christ. All right, we just got a little hump in her right there that we gotta grind out, but actually went better than I thought it would. Okay. All righty, y'all. Well, we got my mini truck's big brother here. It's, let's check the weld qualities on this bad boy. Let's see if it's about the same as the old uh, gooseneck on the mini truck here. Okay, okay. I'll see what they did here. Congratulations, right? You just bought this? Or kind of, maybe? Oh, they could take it for we'll test drive? See. We'll see. We're kind of testing the waters with it. Okay, okay. It's actually an old trailer, like 25 years old. Has it been repowder coated or is this like original? No, it's been repainted. It's okay. got a new deck. We're going to take off the pony motor and plug it directly into the truck. So this, it's all hydraulic. Okay. Um, it's, got, it's got these little guys. You have to park straight, obviously. Right. But um, these come down and rest on the frame. And um, I always wondered what held that up or how that picked that back up. This will completely lift up. Okay. And these right here, these are what control your ride height. So I could put it right here. It's got like four different stages. Gotcha. Um, so you just lift it up wherever you want it. You just set it down here. But when you go to like actually set it down, when you lift this up, you just twist this handle, completely lift these all the way up. Okay. Then this will lower to the ground. And then once you're on the ground, that's when you put those pieces onto the frame. And it holds the neck up? Yep, that will hold the neck up. Okay. You pull this pin, boop, disconnect all this stuff, and drive away. This stays on the truck, this goes on the ground. Unless you gotta do like a wide, wide load. Nice. We'll need that for the mini truck. Yeah. I should have put some of these on there. Chris is acting like he's not sad, but I think he's sad. <laughs> he said it's going to a good home though, so he's happy. Yeah. He's happy as slide. So if you guys haven't watched James's YouTube channel, James came upon a free boat <laughs> <laughs> that in the old uh, redneck ingenuity way, he's going to supposedly at some point probably turn into a playhouse for his kids. So we kind of figured, I think we had our fun with four minutes of fun with our slide. We should probably donate it to some kids. Hopefully James's truck can handle the load. We know the mini truck could. This is a heck of a load here, but Hopefully she makes it home. Better check the air pressure in my tires. Right? Before I go on this. Yeah, we better just put these out just in case. Just, just, go. Yeah, All right, there we go. I don't know, James. These are only rated for 33-33. This slides at least 75 pounds. I want to. I kind of just want to see you get in this thing. <laughs> so how tall are you? On a good day, I'm 6'4". Okay. Oh, dude, you'd make a great Chinese man. Yeah, I don't... All the way to the right and back. I can never drive this. Thing, <laughs> All right, we're gonna see if James can can back this up. He's got way more gooseneck experience than I do. Oh, no power steering. <laughs> no, no power steering. The forklift might be in the way. Yeah, let me get another stab at this. All right, looking good. Looking good. Close to that wall. All right, all right, all right. Oh yeah, yeah. There you go. There we go. Yeah. 
dude, look at this. I don't know how, like I literally. <laughs> Yeah, looking good, looking good. Chatter, chatter, chatter. <laughs> oh. Perfect. There you go. <laughs> I don't fit in this thing. Now we figured this truck, what do we just figure it weighed? 2,300 pounds or something like that? Or yeah. Whatever it is. Just double the 20. Not that much. And so obviously, you know, they aren't gonna build it with power steering, but let me tell you, it is not fun or easy to steer. Like, especially when trying to bring a gooseneck around. There you go, great work, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> that was a... Uh... Not easy. Not easy. <laughs> Alrighty y'all, so James took off with a slide and I don't know if I've mentioned it in any of these videos, but we're out of propane on the forklift here. We've been out for a month and we've just been too lazy to take that tank in to get it refilled. We knew like we're gonna pull it out of the shop one day and it's just not gonna have enough propane to get back in. If not, if you like one, two, three and hold it upside down, you can get them to touch and crank it over faster and it leaks acid everywhere. Hey, yeah, I'll turn it if you wanna do that. So. We thought that might be the now, but we actually ran out of battery juice here that's got an old battery in it prior to us running out of propane. I mean, we don't know that we're not out right now. Let's see, maybe we got good luck while Zach's trying to figure out. Um, we also don't have jumper cables here, so he's trying to figure out a solution there. I'm ready when you are, buddy. Oh, we're already leaking. We're already leaking? <laughs> are you ready? Yeah. Is battery acid flammable? No. No, it's, it's water and acid. Okay. Nope. There we go. <laughs> All right, guys, new battery. We're good. We're back in business here. We gotta get in before we run out of propane. I think we have milked this propane tank for everything it's got. All right, guys, well, we are back in the shop here to get back working on the mini truck. I picked up Dave's mag drill. We're gonna be doing some mag drilling to do um, like pre-cut holes for the lighting, but we've got a, a special guest here on the channel and some really cool stuff that I wanna show you guys that have been like behind the scenes in the works for a minute. We've got Matt from Speedful. Well, it's gonna be Matt from Speedful and Matt from PCM, right? Absolutely, yeah. Should we go tell them what PCM is? Let's do it. Let's show them. All right, guys, this is this is super rad. You guys have known Matt from the channel for a long time with Speedpole, with the truck flag poles. Um, obviously, I've been preaching them forever because well, they're the best out there. Still making them, yeah, that's there. We're not, Speedpole's not <laughs> shutting down, but Matt loves Work. To innovate, well, he loves working too, but he loves to have, like, he loves to work in the machined parts world. That's why the speed pole billet poles and the billet mounts and all that's like the coolest of the cool. But guess what market he's jumping into now? You can probably see it right there. Like, this thing, this, you know, the truck spoke to my heart, but now we're getting into the, the 110 world. Now we're really speaking to Ryan's heart. Matt just got his, uh, his bike built right here. Oh, hold on. I don't know if we can, can we show that? We can show, whatever. We're going to show that. All right. You got it? You want me to grab it? Go ahead. All right. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, she looks good here. Hold. Oh, you even did the exhaust. I'm jealous. Or did it come like that? No, Cerakote. Dang. Looking rad. All right. So, is this a 21 or 22? 22. 22. So Matt's got his 2022 CRF 110 here, and obviously, it's the he, first time I've ridden it. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, there you go. So obviously, Matt went full bore, full build, similar to mine. He actually took it you know, quite a few steps further. Give us a rundown of, let's just talk about what PCM is, because we see we see some PCM here on the bike in a couple different spots. I mean, Pacific obviously- Coast Minis. Okay. Hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have a whole bike, uh, at least Honda, aftermarket part. Gotcha. So started with the triple clamp. We've got four caps with Schrader valve, the little valve that you can release the air pressure. Nice. Right now it's got a bunch of company parts on it. <laughs> Eventually he wants the bike to say PCM on everything, because he's going to start making a bunch of parts. Can I show him the triple clamp you brought me? Absolutely. So if you guys remember, um, I talked about why I decided to go with an anodized purple look for the Bronco, the Bronco wheels, the Bronco suspension, all that. And it came from this type of stuff. So Matt actually got us and built us a sweet purple billet 
anodized triple clamp here. I don't think I've actually shown on YouTube. I actually have another one. <laughs> Is it here? It's not here. I've never shown it on YouTube. Yeah. So we actually have a 2022 CRF 110 as well that I bought a month or so ago. I'm kind of thinking, what do you guys think right here? Look at this color combo right there. I mean, a little gray and purple. Pay homage to the old, uh, to the future Bronco build, I should say. These things are super, super sick. So let's like talk about what makes these different than everybody else's. Matt, go ahead. Well, it's adjustable for one. Right now, these, uh, the clamp is set up in the forward bar position for guys that are taller than 5'9". Right. So to set it up in the forward position, you just undo these bolts, turn the risers around, turn the bar clamp back around. So if you guys know on my 110, I'm running the DBK triple clamp. And the thing that was like, I wasn't so sold on. And back in the day, this used to be a thing is like these risers right here were a separate part. On the DVK, that's not a separate part, which means you can never, ever do anything with that, change that out height-wise, whatever it may be. Mats are different here, right? Absolutely. And by the next production run, we'll have a taller riser that's gonna go up about another half inch, so for guys that are even taller. 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, now, the cool thing about all those parts being removable is you can mix and match colors. So. I have some pictures. Can I post some pictures in this video? Absolutely. Okay, the two -tone? So, yeah. So I'll post some pictures of what the two-tone looks like. Matt always crushes it on everything he does, guys. And uh, Pacific Coast Minis. It's gonna be cool. Take a thing for a spin. Let's see you ride it for the first right. time. Matt, Matt think? took it to another. I told you guys, Matt did more than I did on my bike. Look at this disc brake conversion setup right here. This thing's pretty gnarly. That's off a uh, KX65. KX65, they bill it, they're billet hubs, right? The Talon hubs? That's a Talon, yeah, it's yeah. a billet. Talon billet hub, KX65, rear freaking whatever, master cylinder set up there for the disc brake. Caliper, master cylinder. Yeah, that's a rad setup right there. I wanted to do this to my bike when I saw these. Kind of glad I didn't now that I've seen like how many extra parts Matt had to get to make this work, but uh, I never really used my rear brake. These things are so like, you can downshift into a corner and it like locks up your tire better than the brakes do. Well, not not once you go disc, but I've like trained myself to not use them because the standard drum brakes suck on these bikes. Okay, so back to the mini truck here. We got Dave's mag drill, which is gonna aid us in drilling a bunch of holes along the side here for some lighting. So we're just gonna use these little, they're like a three quarter inch on the back side here, LED light. You can get these in amber and or red. They're just some cheap Chinese ones, Sergio had lying around. So this is what we're gonna use. So we're gonna drill some three quarter holes. Well, we're gonna do a test hole to see if three quarters fits with this little rubber grommet there before we commit. Reason I wanna drill them all now is I'd prefer to drill everything before we get this thing powder coated. That way, uh, not saying we're gonna get everything we need right now, like there's probably gonna be something we forget, but there's less chance of screwing up the powder coat doing it now than if we were to do it after. Plus, all of the holes are gonna be powder coated all the way around. Even though, again, it's got rubber grommets on it. It shouldn't matter, it shouldn't be water and rust that's gonna get in there. And then on the back side, we're gonna be running these LED lights here. These are gonna be brake lights and running lights, which they require a single hole there, and then we'll probably just end up using a self-tapper or something um, on the two sides. But for now, we're gonna drill that single hole. So we've got all of those marked. And I know we've talked about combo squares a lot, but to find center on this inch and a half by three inch, Stuff, we just uh, use a combo square there. I did that pretty much everywhere along the trailers. And then I just basically went ahead and picked where I want the lights to go. So it's gonna be one there, one there, one there, one in the back. Not going too, too crazy with the lights, which I know is strange for me, but this thing's rarely, if ever, gonna be used at night. And it's more so for show and or for like the one or two Instagram videos I'm gonna make this thing fully lit up. And then because it's tough to find time to ever work on my stuff this last couple of weeks, which is why the mini truck and trailer have been sitting there, We've got Fernando for Fern Semi Famous Barbecue pulled up. He needs some new uh, scissor jacks welded on the front of his trailer. So he brought this big old behemoth of a travel trailer. And well, we're gonna be welding that tonight as well and it's already getting late. Let me grab a piece of metal here. We'll use this to do a little test hole to make sure a three quarter hole is exactly what we need for those lights. So if you guys haven't seen this tool, it means you haven't watched the channel very much, but one of my favorite tools here, the old mag drill. So it's got an electromagnet you can see it is now stuck to that piece of metal. Problem is, um, it's got this fail safe. So basically, if this thing were to be like magneted upside down on a, some steel I-beam that we were drilling and it fell off, it automatically shuts off because it senses that it broke the magnetic field. 
Well, if it feels like it doesn't have a good enough magnetic field, which would be on a piece like this, where you can see, you know, you can still see some of the electromagnetics exposed. Um, even though that piece isn't going anywhere, the sensor inside doesn't think it's got that good of a hold, so it won't let the power stay on. So you can see that doesn't stay on. You can manually override it and you just have to hold it down. The whole time that you're using it as if that's any safer, <laughs> um, but that's what we're gonna have to do here. Okay, so we've got our hole drilled here. Don't mind that one. Um, they aren't lying when they said the magnet wasn't really stuck on there, but let's see how this booger fits up in here. Come on, wires, don't fight us. Does she fit in a three quarter inch hole? Oh, that's tight. Maybe the grommet goes in first. Maybe that's the trick here. There we go, grommet's in. Now does the light go in? Oh yeah, perfecto. Just kinked a little bit because of the wires, but okay. That's what she's gonna look like all down the side of this thing. So it's like 10 o'clock at night right now. I know if I didn't eat right now, the rhino wasn't getting dinner tonight. So I uh, put Fern to work so I could eat for a second here. All right, look at Fern working hard over here. Uh, what's happening? Now I don't have my center punch here. So to ensure that we're actually gonna be able to drill right where our mark is, typically we'd center punch it and then run in with an eighth inch drill bit just to put a little dimple. That's all you need to do. You don't need to go all the way through. Just put a little dimple and that ensures when you come back um, with a mag drill or any type of drill press, the bit will actually center itself up in that little dimple even if you're just a hair off. So we're gonna have to eyeball this booger right now and just put us a little dimple and hopefully the drill bit doesn't walk because I'm holding the drill with one hand right now. There we go, not bad. So that little dimple right there is enough for the mag drill to center itself up as it goes in. And here's where the beauty of a mag drill comes in. We're drilling sideways. All right, y'all, well, you can see we marred her up pretty good there, but we lucked out because the rubber grommet dang near hides it perfectly. So not worried about that one. We, we dodged a bullet there, but We've got those three holes drilled. We gotta do one more on that side. The one's on the back. Probably end up putting one or two here on this portion of the tongue, just, just because. But right now we got a weld up Fern's trailer. You ready, Fernando? I, I mean, I don't work with metal. I'm only a lot to work with plastic. Oh, so. that's entry level? Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm still new. I, I remember my first welder when I was a kid. It was this little toy and you basically would build this truck and you'd weld the pieces on, but it was this like drill that spun these like little plastic rods until it got molten hot and it would glue these pieces of this truck together and then you would smash it into something, break it apart, and then you would re-weld it together. So I didn't bring the welding cart because um, obviously we're still doing a bunch of stuff over at the restaurant. This is my one day to sneak away with the welder to be able to uh, work on the mini truck and then I found out with furniture trailer. It was perfect timing, perfect day. Perfect. So we got no welding cart. <laughs> We've got a loose bottle and a loose welder in the back here. Well, I screwed up y'all, so totally Forgot to bring my extension cord. I thought we had one here, but I was completely wrong. But we do not. So as far as the welder can reach is there to there to right there. Not far enough to get to Fern's trailer. So we're gonna disconnect. Well, Fern back up first before we disconnect so I can get the forklift out. We're gonna use the forklift to bring the trailer as close to the shop here as we can. I'd pull it in, but Fern had to buy the longest freaking trailer he could find. I was about to say, Fern, like, we're just gonna stand here and look at this, and then I realized the damn thing's going on its own. You got everything on a remote? Everything's automatic. There we go, there we go, there we go. Oh, we have liftoff. Nice. Everything is automatic, so it's set to my truck height to go uh, lift up. You got a big old plate in the way. Hopefully it'll reach. Okay guys, so the problem is when me and Zach decided to uh, drill this hole into our forks to put a ball in, we, we left a good amount of room there because most of our trailers like that would work for. But apparently Fern's trailer, we got this big old part of the frame right there in the way so I can't come straight in with it to grab it to drag it around without uh, <laughs> that digging in. All right guys, so we're getting a little sketchy here now. Instead of going for the ball, we've just gone under the tongue there, which means if this thing started rolling this way, we're gonna lose it. Thankfully, it's uphill. Oh man, that's my trailer. I'm riding the e-brake here, we're going uphill. I'm trying to not burn out. Hope we got traction to pull this. The beamith of the trailer here. We just wanna do two welds. Nothing. 
nothing's ever easy here at the workbook shop. You know, it's meth and weld. Meth and weld, that's why it's sketchy. Meth and weld is always good. This is what happens when Fern shows up in the middle of the night wants stuff welding. I just got booked for an event that's three days away. We're like a foot short. <laughs> can we come a foot closer? I don't know, I wish you liked the sidewall of your trailer. All right, I can probably get most of this one. All right. Talk about a ghetto setup, guys. We've got, <laughs> got our gas bottle there. The welder, everything stretched out as far as it can go. We got the Milwaukee light, the trailer that's barely held on here. And we got a very tired rhino. What could go wrong? Hopefully I don't get smushed by a trailer. That's my goal tonight. Don't get smushed by a trailer. Oh, I love the smell of burning paint in the morning. Oh, and melting plastic. On my clamp. Alrighty, y'all. I don't even know what time is it. Battery's about to die on the GoPro. It is uh, 12 17 at night, so the welder couldn't reach to this side very much. So I literally just got a little bit of boogered on weld right there, and then I put a tiny little bolt right there. <laughs> that way, Fern can actually use this thing and doesn't fall off going down the road. Uh, good luck, Fern. So much for working on the mini trailer tonight. We got, we got three holes. We got three holes. Now we got to get this thing out of here and it not fall down that slope and tip Fern's trailer over. Okay, we successfully got the trailer out. GoPro died, so couldn't film it, but went out much easier than it came in. I'm going home. I'm tired. <laughs> we got to work on the restaurant in the morning, and then we will be back here drilling some holes, doing the final bit of welding. I was hoping tonight was going to be the night I could do the final bit of welding because we brought the welder all the way from the restaurant, but that is not the case. So we will haul everything back here <laughs> tomorrow night. I need two welders now, so we can have like an on-the-road welder and a shop welder. All right, y'all, so... I decided not to go to bed right now. It's like 1.30 in the morning. I just want to get all these holes drilled. Hopefully you can hear me. Okay, now I think it's safe. We can call it quits. We got enough done for the day. Decided we're gonna do three lights right there on the tongue. We've obviously got our lights going down the side. Then on the back here, we got our hole drilled for that little peg wiring thing to slip into. And we'll have two of these boogers right there. That'll be our brake lights. Now, I can go to bed. We'll continue this when we continue this. Damn.